There were a lot of surprise teams during the 2021 season. Programs such as Wake Forest, Utah, Baylor, Oklahoma State, Michigan State, and Arkansas were not expected to be as good as they were, and it was really cool to see all those teams come out of nowhere. I'm forgetting one though. One team that actually made history, and may have been more shocking than any of the others. Yes, we're talking about Pittsburgh. This is a team that has been very mediocre the last few years, and their quarterback wasn't even that great, so the fact they won as many games as they did and won a conference title was pretty shocking. Last season was arguably the greatest season in Pittsburgh football history, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about how it happened, go through the season itself, and just let everyone relive all the best moments. So, without further ado, let's get started. We will need some background information first, so I'm going to touch on three things. Kenny Pickett, Jordan Addison, and Pittsburgh before this year. So first going back in time, Pitt was an independent school until 1991. That is when they first joined the Big East. From there, the school saw a lot of success, and two seasons in particular went very well. In 2003, they got as high as ranked number 9 in the country, and in 2009, they were as high as number 8. You probably remember Larry Fitzgerald, as he's probably the most notable player during the 2000s for Pitt, and they were the definition of a solid program. Things would start to change a little bit though as they would enter the ACC. That would happen after the Big East would dissolve, and in 2013, they would enter that conference. From 2013 to 2020, they made a bowl game six times, winning two, losing four. They had jumped in and out of the rankings in three of those years, but for the most part, they were pretty mediocre. They went eight and five three times, seven and seven once, and then six and seven and seven and six. This was a team that was guaranteed to win six to eight games pretty much every year, but nothing really more than that. In 2020, the team went 6-5, and five, and some thought Pitt could be decent in 2021, but no one thought they'd be as good as they were. Let's meet the other two guys who helped make this happen. The first one is Jordan Addison. He is from the city of Frederick, Maryland, and was actually wanted by many big-time programs around the country. The 6-foot wide receiver not only played on offense, but also played on defense, and he was listed as an athlete on 24-7 sports. He decided to commit to Pat Narduzzi and the Panthers, and became the highest-ranked member of their class. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a four-star recruit, the number 10 athlete, and the 275th best player in the nation. As a freshman, Addison was productive right away, as he caught 60 passes for 666 yards and four touchdowns. He was expected to have a big sophomore year, but no one expected him to be the best receiver in the nation. Who was the guy throwing him the ball? Kenny Pickett. From a young age, Kenny Pickett always wanted to play quarterback, but he was undersized and it did not look like it was going to happen. It would eventually happen though, as the three-star recruit decided to commit to Temple. He would eventually flip to Pitt though, as the Panthers offer was bigger to him, and the six foot three New Jersey product would head to Pittsburgh with a decent amount of hype. He'd see his first action in 2017, as he would famously start against Miami, as they would upset the Hurricanes the day after Thanksgiving, and ended their playoff hopes. In 2018, he would take over as a starter, as he threw for 2,000 yards and 12 touchdowns, and his best season before 2021 was 2019. He threw for over 3,000 yards with 13 touchdowns and 9 picks. He struggled to score the ball and he struggled with turnovers and that was on full display in 2020. As his completion percentage dropped, he only threw for 2,400 yards and had 13 touchdowns compared to 9 picks again. He decided to try to come back and boost his draft stock in 2021 and use the extra year of eligibility. That is exactly what he would do and he would go off. So now we know where Pitt football was before this year as the expectations were probably to win 6 to 8 games. Jordan Addison was a guy who was supposed to break out, but not be a superstar, and Kenny Pickett was an underwhelming starter who was looking for one last chance to save his career. So how did the season go? Let's take a look. Pitt's first matchup would come at home against UMass. This was not a difficult game in the slightest, as they easily won 51-7. Week 2 would be the first major test for the Panthers, as they would have to go on the road to Neyland Stadium and play against the Tennessee Volunteers. This game definitely lived up to the hype, as it only went back and forth all night, but with 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, Kenny Pickett would find Jordan Addison for a touchdown, which would put them up 41-27, and the Volunteers could not overcome that deficit, as Pitt won 41-34, and this was a huge win for their momentum. Week 3 was extremely weird. They'd have a home matchup against Western Michigan, who in my opinion was one of the better schools in the MAC, but there was no reason for them to lose this game. That is exactly what would happen though, as Western Michigan quarterback Caleb Ellaby went off as he had nearly 400 yards and 3 touchdowns, as the Broncos put up 44 points. Unfortunately for Pitt, they only had 41 points. While Kenny Pickett did throw for 400 yards and 6 touchdowns, it was not enough, as they lost 44-41, and it seemed like Pitt football's destiny was to always lose games they shouldn't, 
and another 7-5 season was on the horizon, right? No. Kenny Pickett decided it was time to put it into high gear. He threw for 400 yards and 5 touchdowns in a win over New Hampshire, had 400 yards and 4 touchdowns in a 52-21 victory over Georgia Tech, and then he had 200 yards and 2 touchdowns in a 28-7 victory over the Virginia Tech Hokies. This was a huge moment for them as they are now 6-1, 3-0 in the ACC, and were ranked 23rd in the nation. They had a huge home matchup against Clemson, and this game sold out and was the height of the Pittsburgh hype. Against the biggest brand in the ACC, Kenny Pickett threw for 300 yards and two touchdowns, as pretty much everyone showed up in this game, and Pitt won 27-17, now proving that they were at the top of the ACC and could compete with anybody. Sadly, their playoff hopes were pretty much done after they lost to Miami, as the Canes' newfound starter Tyler Van Dyke threw for nearly 450 yards and three touchdowns and a 38-34 victory over the number 17 ranked Panthers. But just like every other time they were hit with a setback, Pitt would respond. Kenny Pickett threw for 400 yards and three touchdowns and a win over Duke, outdueled Sam Howell in a matchup in which the Panthers won 30-23, and then they had a wild game against Virginia in which Pickett threw for 340 yards and four touchdowns against the ACC's top passing quarterback, Brennan Armstrong. The Panthers were now 6-1 in the ACC and had a 9-2 record and would have one remaining conference game. This would come against a desperate Syracuse team who was one win away from bowl game but thankfully, the Panthers did not play on the competition as Pickett had four touchdowns in this game and led them to a 31-14 win, giving them a 10-2 regular season record and a berth in the 2021 ACC title game. Pickett was now in the Heisman conversation, and had he just won that Western Michigan game or even that Miami game, maybe he would have been in a better spot, but in the ACC championship game, he would have an opportunity to cement his legacy in college football forever. Their opponent would be the number 16 ranked Wake Forest Demon Deacons, as they are the other breakout team in the ACC of the year. Led by their newfound star quarterback Sam Hartman, the Demon Deacons went 10-2 in the regular season and were now facing off against the Panthers in this ACC title game. While it was close for a while, Pitt ended up winning the game 45-21. But in this game, we had the moment that'll define Kenny Pickett forever. We all remember he took off on a quarterback scramble, and instead of sliding, he did a fake slide and then took it all the way for a touchdown. And while it did count, it was extremely controversial. Just a few weeks after the game was over, they made this play against the rules, as it is definitely very deceptive to the defenders and could result in players getting hurt. It was definitely the Heisman moment of Kenny Pickett's career, but he would not end up winning the Heisman Trophy. Despite passing for 4,319 yards and 42 touchdowns, Pickett would finish in third place behind Alabama's Bryce Young and Michigan's Aiden Hutchinson. It was still an incredible year for Pitt, as they would get an opportunity to play in a big-time bowl game. While Pickett would opt out, the number 12 ranked Panthers would face off against the number 10 ranked Michigan State Spartans in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. The Spartans would end up winning 31-21, but it did not take away from how impressive the 2021 season was for Pitt. They won their first ACC title in program history, the receiver won the Blitnikoff Award, Kenny Pickett was a Heisman finalist and ended up going in the first round, and they had exciting wins over teams like Tennessee, Clemson, and North Carolina. They had the infamous fake slide, and for the first time in a long time, it seemed like pit football was actually fun to watch. This would end up having a ripple effect going into 2022, as they were now seen as a cool place for quarterbacks to go. That's why former USC star Keaton Slovis decided to enter his name in the portal and join Pat Narduzzi for the 2022 season. We don't know what's going to happen yet, but if Jordan Addison ends up staying, which I don't think is likely going to happen, then Pitt could have another big year. The Panthers won 11 games for just the fifth time in program history, and I think many would say it's arguably the most exciting season they've ever had. I know I found myself glued to my couch watching Pitt this year, and I fell in love with all the players and the team, so it was awesome to watch, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for all these players and the future of the Pitt Panthers program. What do you guys think, though? If you're a Pitt football fan, what did you think of this season? What is another magical season from a team I could take a look at in my next video? And how do you guys think Pitt will do in 2022? Be sure to let me know down below, smash that like button if you want to support today's video, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.